You all said tell me about the loom, so I'm telling you about the loom. You guys gotta forgive my brain a little bit. Um, I am on day one out of COVID jail for people who are watching this in the future. Sorry that the camera's crooked. Um, for people who are watching this in the future, current COVID rules is that if you test positive for COVID, you stay in COVID jail for uh, five days, and then you uh, mask up and things like that for five days. Just why I have my mask, because I'm wearing it in my house. So someone said, tell us about the loom pink, and here we go. So this loom is called the Cleot Tapestry Loom by La Cisse. I think it's cursed because I've actually tried to make a complicated video about it more than once, and every time there's something that goes wrong. But um, the main things about it, we're not even going to plan this, I'm just going to talk about it. The first very strange thing about it is its prevalence. So you can find this loom on lots of places that don't sell looms or loom-related supplies. So like, yes, it's on Amazon and it's on Walmart.com. It's on eBay. That's to be expected. Ugh. I'm not going to edit that out. Um, it's also on Overstock.com. It's on OrientalTrading.com. It's on Joanne.com. Joanne does not sell loom supplies. And on a lot of these websites, you will see that the only weaving related supply, also as a clarification, this is a weaving loom, not a knitting loom. Uh, the main difference is that knitting looms are affordable. So, uh, they won't have any hand weaving supplies at all, except for this one loom. So whoever created it, which is Lasisse, has found that there is some kind of business market that they're into that they get by just having this saturated in markets where people who are shopping for hand weaving supplies aren't actually shopping at. So I guess it's targeting that person who's just like casually wondered about it. It's also relatively inexpensive. Selling a loom is actually the art of selling somebody a lot of sticks and convincing them that it's important. I've previously spent $35 on a stick before for my loom. Uh, but so this is, it's about 50 bucks. Sometimes it goes up. I think it might be at like 80 bucks right now. Inflation hit the hand weaving industry hard. So I think it's currently at about 70 bucks. I'm not going to fact check that. Uh, I'm gonna snort again. <clears throat> Ooh, that was worse than I thought it was gonna be. Okay, so, uh, the loom. That's part one, is why is it everywhere? Um, part two is that they faked all of their Amazon reviews. So the way that this product is listed on Amazon is a blatant violation of Amazon's terms of service. If you have separate products, they need separate listings specifically because of the way that Amazon ratings works. How they have listed the Lasis Loom is that they have five items, three of which are related to each other, listed as different colors of the same product. So when you go and you look up the Lasis Client Tapestry Loom reviews, they're actually pretty darn positive. But when you go into the reviews and you look up which color they're reviewing, you will see that the color that they're reviewing is actually a stamp pad not manufactured by Lasis. The five items that are available from this is the Clyot Tapestry Loom, uh, Lasis's beading loom, and three stamp pads of different colors that Lasis did not manufacture at all. They're just a distributor for. Most of the positive reviews are for stamp pads, and almost every negative review is for the Lasis Clyot Tapestry Loom. Um, so I was looking at that, I was thinking, well, maybe it's being bought by people who don't know how to uh, weave already, which makes sense because the primary markets that they sell it at is for people who aren't actually looking on sites where you normally buy reputable looms. If you go onto Woolery, it's not on Woolery. It's not on websites where people who shop for loom things are. This loom is available to people who don't know what they're looking for, but not actually being sold by people who know what a loom is. So obviously there were going to be some negative reviews. Again, all weaving is the art of selling people sticks and then convincing them that they were worth a lot of money. If you go on Etsy and you look up a backstrap loom, it is nine sticks. But knowing which sticks is important. 
So I, of course, bought the Lassise Clyot Tapestry Loom. Oh, uh, there's also no good instructions. There are no reviews by independent YouTubers. There are no reviews on blogs. There's very few pictures of this being set up. Um, and notably, it doesn't come with, like, shuttles or a beater or a couple other things that you would normally get with a loom. Uh... So nobody's bought it, so of course I had to buy it. I was gonna buy it and uh, make a tutorial on how to use it, but it turns out it is so goddamn unpleasant to use that the reason there's no reviews is because nobody can work with it for more than about 90 seconds without throwing it out the window. Uh, interestingly, while they say it's a tapestry loom, on the single YouTube video by Lassise about how to set it up, which has major artifacting at like a very crucial point of how to set it up. Uh, so that's helpful. But on this uh, video and in the instructions and in the sales pitch, they'll also say that you can use it for like two harness weaves and plain weaves. And the problem is that as far as um, tapestry looms are generally made under what's called continuous warp, which is that the, uh, so if this is a loom, you have the threads that go this way and then you that way. Uh, and tapestry looms usually have one big thread that weaves back and forth because you're not making a super huge tapestry. Um, and so the client loom does that, but they do it in such a way where it becomes completely impossible to maintain tension and to keep your grain straight. When you start beating things down, whether you're doing it with a bobbin or a, um, a beater or a shed stick or whatever you're beating it down with, the bars that it's connected to, because the bars just wrap around, the bars it's connected to will shift. And on a good day, that will just mess up your grain. And on a bad day, it'll slide off the edge um, and undo all your all your warp. And uh, a thread under tension cannot tangle, but a thread relieved of its tension will tangle immediately. That's just the basics of how warping a loom is. So... The other thing is that it doesn't do a lot of what they say it does. It comes with this integrated warping board where the pegs are like this big. Uh, to do a full-sized warp on a board, I have things like this big that slot into the back of my rigid heddle loom, and those aren't even big enough. So you have to do multiple individual pieces if you want to do a loom that's a weaving wider than, you know, like seven inches wide, and they're so big on additional warping techniques and things like that. So this loom is just a nightmare if you want to do half of the things that they say you do. And so for people who really want to get into tapestry weaving, it's not all that appealing because if you want to get into tapestry weaving initially, you need a picture frame and a box of finishing nails. And you take the picture frame and you nail and then you warp, and then you weave, and you can weave a tapestry as big as your picture frame. So when you're getting into uh, longer warps, which is the thing that I think a lot of people are interested in, it becomes very difficult to uh, get a longer warp on this piece. It's even harder to get a short warp on this piece. There's no keeping your grain straight. So in order to get uh, anything vaguely correctly working and properly arranged, uh, I eventually had to just completely ignore how they said to set it up. It required, my setup required duct tape. It required almost stripping some of the screws in it. Uh, it also just is not a well-made piece. Like, mine is so janky. Uh, and then wrapping things around the bottom bars like I would on a... Uh, I had to stop doing a continuous warp and do it like I did on my rigid heddle loom, only with no ratchets. It was not fun. There is nothing fun about this loom. And the only reason why people buy this loom is because of the way that it's marketed and the faked Amazon reviews. So I do have it. It's a big pile of sticks because that's what looms are. 
and I do enjoy weaving, and I do not use it. It's not good. Don't buy it. That's it, Yohanna, made to talk about the loom. Here we go.